back everyone, it's Sylvia from Aussie Scrapper. And the project that I'm working on today is actually a card that I made for my mother-in-law for her birthday. Now everything you see in front of you is stuff that I have from my stash. It's all my little bits and pieces, all my scraps. My aim this year is to try and get through as much of this stuff as possible and get it all used up. I'm just going through my little pocket of surprises, I guess, and pulling things out that I think might work on this card. All I know at this stage is that I'm going to make her a birthday card. I have no idea what it's going to look like. I have nothing planned in my head. I'm just basically, all I know is that I want to use up all my scraps and I'm going through all my bits and pieces. The background of this page is actually going to be made from a piece of cardboard that's come from an ephemera pack or maybe from a packet of stamps that I bought. I don't know where it came from, but I did keep it because it's got a lovely rose pattern or flower pattern behind it. And I'm just going to use a stencil with my very favourite embossing paste. It's from um, Anna Griffin from Portier Creations, Creations, I should say, and I love this embossing paste. I've just sped this up about five or six times just so you know what I've done but I haven't bored you with the process. As I was impatient, I did dry this embossing paste with my heat gun. I'm just going to trim off the labelling that's on this um, piece of packaging cardboard. And can you see how it's got this lovely little pink delicate flowers behind it? And I don't know if you can see the embossed paste that's on there, but I just love how it looks in real life. It's a shame you can't really see it, see it in, in the camera. So this is one of the scraps that I pulled up from my scrap jeans, and I'm just going to cut it up because I want to try and play with placements of where things might go. And just remember, at this point in time, I still have no idea where this is going to go. I'm just playing with my scraps. I'll just fast forward some um, some of this because I want you to see my thinking process, but in real time, it's just so slow. So I'm going to speed it up probably. It's, this is spread up probably about four times. Now that so-called piece of chipboard or wood video, I can't remember which one it was, doesn't actually make it onto this card, even though I did try my hardest to use to use it on this projector. I'll have to save it for another one. And then I just started playing with other bits and pieces, and I don't think these make it onto the layout either. But I left it in so that you could see that when you make any sort of project, really it's just trial and error, and it's just playing with what you've got. I did dip into some of my products, and I just pulled out from my book veneer stash some of these lovely little hearts, love hearts that say love on them, but I think that all gets covered up so you don't really see that they say love. And once again, all I'm doing is just playing with placement, playing with, I don't know, playing with ideas, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I also got this little, um, I don't know what this is, it's been in my stash, I don't know what I used it for, but hey, I'm going to put it on this layout just for a bit of texture. I did glue everything down using my Liquitex Heavy Gel Medium. So I'm just going to play with my Ken Oliver Colour Bursts here and the colour that I'm using is Burnt Orange and I'm just sprinkling it at the top there and then just activating it with some water that's in that little spray bottle. And I just let it run down the card cardboard and then I just tilted and Try to make that paint flow or that liquid flow and cause lovely little patterns. There's a bit of excess there and I just turned it down with uh, the baby wipe. Now what I did forget to do is to gesso this. That's why I smacked my hand. And the only reason why I want to add gesso to this is A, to make everything the one colour, white, and also to protect the paper because this paper that I've used is just from some packaging and even though it's nice and thick, it's not waterproof. And I do give it a quick dry with the heat gun. And I actually, even though I stuffed it up by not putting the gesso down first, I quite like that bit of orange showing from underneath. So the stuff up that I've learned something from, which I might use in the future. So I'm back, back 
to put in some more of that burnt orange at the top there and activating that and let it run down the page and I just turn it around and try to make the individual patterns. Activate it again with some water and I just do this till I'm quite happy with it. Now I didn't like that what I did there so I add some more of the colour burst and activate it once again. This is just the first layer done and yeah I'm sort of happy with it so that's what it looks like. You can now see all the the patterns and the texture underneath. So I'm going in with a different colour now and I believe this one is called sepia. And I'm going to do exactly the same process. So I might speed this up so that you can see what I'm doing but I'm not boring you with it. I am very blessed to have a wonderful mother-in-law. She's a wonderful lady and we, I believe that we have a, um, a good relationship. Uh, that's my personal opinion. You might have to ask her what she feels about me, but I'm really lucky to have her for a mother-in-law. Um, I've got no complaints. She's wonderful. She's kind. She's generous. She's basically everything you would want in a mother-in-law. So enough about that and this shimmer mist that I'm using from Tattered Angels is a very old one. There's not much left of it. It's called Pine Cone. It's a beautiful colour but it was a limited edition and I'm going to be really sad when it runs out. So next I'm using some Distressed Oxide and I believe that this colour is oh, Spice Marmalade. Yes, that's what it is. Spice Marmalade and just in those white spaces I'm just adding it and then in other spots, I'm just trying to use it for a bit, a bit of contrast and a pop of colour and to tone down some of the browns. As much as I like this spice marmalade, I do tone it down a tad by using the antique linen over the top. And then I'm going to go in and highlight the all the chipboard or wood veneer, I can't remember what it was, with some. Oh, broken china and I then go over the top of the broken china with some salty ocean. I definitely know that I want to use this beautiful blue butterfly that I found and that's why I'm trying to get the blue out but I love that blue butterfly so much I want to match the colours in it so I find this starlight metallic paint in my stash and it is just perfect. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to rub the paint onto or the chipboard and really give it the pop so that that background stands out. I decide that I want to add a bit more blue to this card and I'm just using the nozzle of the stress spray stain, the colour that you use Broken China and I've just decided that no, this is going to take forever with the nozzle and I'm going in slowly and I'm just adding a bit of the um, ink using a, this little paintbrush that I've got. And I just want to at the top there and I'm just slowly just activating that. And then I think, oh yes, I want it to drip down. So I start being a bit more generous with my ink. And I just let the, basically I just dab it on and I just let the ink run. I'm going to later add some of this ink there with those to all four sides of this card. And I really, really love how this turned out in the end. So I made the card using some watercolour paper from that I just bought at the junk, junk store from Monta. It's 300 DSMs and I really like the quality of it and I usually make most of my cards from that paper. I'm now going to go through my scraps of paper that I just have there, all my bits and pieces and I'm just looking through till I find something that I can use to give this card some contrast. So I think this piece of paper is going to go well and I just trim it down to size and then I'm going to just ink around all four edges using the stress oxide and the colour is antique linen. My card base is now adhered to the background paper so I've decided to go in with some Rangers Archival ink and the colour is coffee just to ink all four sides. My little work of art I'm just going to now adhere it to its permanent home on its card base and I quite like how that looks. So I'm just showing you these rhinestones that I just buy at the junk store, um, it's called the home store, they're from Style Crafts and I just think they, they're lovely. About $2, $2.50. So these lovely little flowers are from the Village Scraps January kit but it's January 2017.
Now I'm going to use a collection of stamps here and the happy birthday from one and bits and pieces from other stamps and also these word stickers. Oh no, not word stickers, what are they? They're um, letter stickers. So just to spell out the word to the. Sorry, off camera I stamped these words and then I embossed it using some embossing powder and my heat gun in a lovely navy blue colour. So now I'm going to trim out all my words and start placing them onto my card. But before I do that, I am going to use my Versamark ink all over again and I'm just going to ink the four sides of my words, drop some embossing powder on it, and this is a lovely navy blue embossing powder, and then heat set it. I don't like how white the paper is, so I'm going to gently ink it with using some antique linen distress oxides just to tie it all into the card. This is another product, these flowers, that I'm trying to get out of my stash. I've had them forever and the colour's not quite right, the blue. So I'm just using some broken china distress spray stain to ink all around it and just add a few more highlights. I've decided to now add a bit of shine to my flowers and I'm just using my Colour Blast Shimmer Cubes and the colour is Sing in the Blues and all you do to these lovely shimmer cubes to activate them is you just spritz them with a bit of water. I'm just going to use my hot glue gun now to just adhere all the flowers and all the words to the card. I had these little leaves in my stash so I'm just going to paint them with some distress paint and the colour is peeled paint. Once they're painted, I'm just going to add some perfect pearls in forest green just to add a hint of shimmer. So I'm just going to stamp the sentiment inside the inside of the card and it just reads, you are a treasure friend who will always have a special place in my heart. Here are some close-ups and thank you for sticking with me. Sorry this is a long video but there was just so many steps of this lovely card that I made. And my mother-in-law is definitely worth the effort. So thank you. Bye.